cells of the immune system mononuclear cells let us look at the learning outcomes of the session mononuclear cells comprise monocytes and macrophages which are agranulocytes that means that these cells uh, do not have granules in its cytoplasm and uh, they just have a single nucleus and they are phagocytic in function which means that they are able to engulf uh, the foreign antigens and uh, kill it or destroy it monocytes are circulating in blood and when they enter tissues they differentiate into macrophages which in turn either get fixed in tissues or they circulate in tissues so if they get fixed in tissues they are also considered to be histiocytes macrophages are antigen presenting cells apart from being phagocytic because they are able to engulf antigens they are able to uh, present it on its surface through mhc class 2 and hence they are basically a link between innate and adaptive immunity activated macrophages can eliminate both exogenous and endogenous microorganisms now when you look at uh, mononuclear phagocytes they develop within the bone marrow cells itself the hematopoietic uh, stem cells differentiate into myeloid progenitor cells which in turn form granulocyte monocyte progenitor cells and then these differentiate into what is called as pro monocytes in blood the pro monocytes mature into monocytes and these monocytes then circulate in the blood for about 8 hours so therefore they are also basically looking around for um uh, what we call as foreign particles in tissues monocytes enlarge and differentiate into macrophages and these macrophages on getting exposed to an antigen or through growth factors and cytokines they are activated and they become even more phagocytic than uh, the monocytes and they secrete several soluble factors that can kill pathogens so they not just are phagocytic but they also secrete several uh, soluble factors which can also help in killing the pathogens now when you look at the journey from monocytes to macrophages okay what one observes is that as the monocytes begin to differentiate into macrophages the cells enlarge 5 to 10 fold the intracellular organelles also increase in number and complexity in comparison to monocytes and the cells acquire higher uh, phagocytic ability as you can see you can see how the pseudopodia extensions are increasing so that they are able to uh, you know kind of um, engulf and form uh, uh, vacuoles which are then called as phagosomes so through these phagosomes these phagosomes will then uh, fuse with lysosomes to form what is called as phagolysosomes and within the phagolysosomes the antigen is broken down into smaller fragments and those fragments can then be presented on the surface through mhc class 2 and also in the process of uh, making it a phagolysosome the antigen is also killed so in moreover in response to that there is an increased secretion of several soluble factors so macrophages are able to um, you know have peroxidase and esterase activity which is helping in the immune response uh, they have specific receptors for antibodies and complement system complements are molecules of the immune system which are able to um, eliminate uh, pathogens and antigens and these specific receptors for antibody are such that they can carry out what is called as antibody dependent cytotoxicity can be stimulated from a resting to active active phase as one of ob one has observed and they can be prolific and give rise to varied secretions so therefore uh, when you have the macrophages going into the tissue and the tissues there it where it can be lo located the name of the macrophages changes depending on the tissue that it is located in so if they are present in bone marrow they are called as histiocytes if they are present in the central nervous system they are called as microglial cells 
If they are in the connective tissues, again, they are called as histiocytes. If they are in the liver, they are called as Kupfer cells. If in the lung, alveolar macrophages. In kidney, mesangial cells. In peritoneum, peritoneal macrophages. And in the spleen, thymus, lymph node, which are the secondary lymphoid organs, they are called as macrophages itself. They are either free or they are fixed. So fixed macrophages, uh, therefore, one observes can be named by different uh, can be given different names depending on the um, tissue in which they are located. Now, several stimuli can activate macrophages. So, when you look at macrophages per se, macrophages can be activated by cytokines that are secreted by activated T helper cells. They can, uh, in response to that, uh, you know, form what is called as gamma interferon and we all know that gamma interferon has antiviral activity. They can get uh, activated through mediators of inflammatory response. They can get activated from signals uh, from tissue repair and regenerations. So macrophages are also involved in uh, uh, phagocytos, uh, uh, phagocytosing damaged tissue and uh, get rid of the damaged tissue as well. They are uh, activated by components of the bacterial cell wall for, say, for example, lipopolysaccharides. And uh, uh, these basically uh, make uh, macrophages active and the active, uh, active macrophages then can engulf the bacteria as a whole. Now, macrophages in turn, okay, secrete inflammatory mediators themselves. And these inflammatory mediators in turn can uh, kind of uh, um, interact with T helper cells or can uh, in fact, so you have what you see is that uh, the macrophages themselves can activate further T helper cells. So it's a kind of cycle that keeps happening. Plus, it can also uh, secreted inflammatory mediators can also affect the bacteria per se. They also give rise to cytotoxic pro proteins. Uh, they give rise to high levels of MHC class 2. So they are presenting the uh, antigens on the surface through MHC class 2, which can then be recognized by T helper cells on uh, uh, T cell receptors on T helper cells. And that in turn can mediate uh, uh, cellular immunity. So you can have cytotoxic T cells being formed or you can have B cells get activating to form plasma cells and plasma cells will secrete uh, antibodies. So it is in fact, therefore, uh, definitely helping adaptive immunity to uh, build a response that is very specific towards a particular antigen. They are also secreting several uh, cytokines like for example interleukin-1, TNF-alpha, IL-6, etc. Now uh, this is a simple uh, uh, you know, a diagram of how uh, you can have uh, uh, phagocytosis happening. So you can see how the pseudopodia can extend to engulf a bacteria and then that bacteria is present within a vesicle that is termed as a phagosome. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you have the lysosomes getting matured from the um, endomembrane network system. And these lysosomes then fuse with the phagosome to form phagolysosomes. And, the phago and within the phagolysosomes, again, the degraded or the fragmented antigens are, um, you know, uh, carried by MHC class 2 and expressed on the surface. And also... Uh, you have the exocytosed degraded uh, material. Uh, so the degraded material, material is just exocytosed. While in the process, you can see how MHC class 2 is, ex is exhibiting an antigenic peptide. And this in turn can be recognized by a T cell receptor on a T helper cell. So that is how you have the macrophages uh, actually phagocyting an antigen. But in the process of phagocyting an antigen, it is also expressing it on the surface so as to activate uh, T helper cells and carry out adaptive immunity. So this is what we, and, and interestingly what one should understand is that the macrophages are actually moving towards a particular bacteria or towards a particular foreign particle based on what is called as chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is uh, attraction towards a particular chemical. So therefore, uh, they can adhere to the antigen uh, based on chemotaxis per se. 
Opsonization to mediates phagocytosis. So we know that if antibodies are bound to antigens, then uh, the antibody makes the antigen more palatable and that antibody can actually bind to the macrophages and that initiates phagocytosis. Now, the killing per se by the macrophages can be either oxygen-dependent killing or oxygen-independent killing. So, with oxygen-dependent killing, we know that reactive oxygen species are activated, nitric oxide, uh, HNO2, etc. And these are responsible for killing the bacteria. Or it can be through oxygen-independent molecules, say, for example, defensins, tumor necrosis factor, lysozyme, hydrolytic enzymes, so on and so forth. So, therefore... Uh, phagocytosis by macrophages uh, can uh, resort to both ways of healing, oxygen dependent as well as oxygen independent. So let us make the conclusions. Monocytes circulate in the blood for about 8 hours and uh, once they have been developed in the bone marrow as pro-monocytes. The monocytes differentiate into tissue macrophages or circulating macrophages which on stimuli get activated. Activated macrophages have enhanced phagocytic role and antigen presenting potential. They are pro-inflammatory. They release soluble factors and activate T helper cells. The macrophages cytotoxic and antimicrobial activity is by two mechanisms, either oxygen mediated killing or oxygen independent killing. So monocytes and macrophages also referred to as peripheral blood mononuclear cells are able to digest both exogenous and endogenous antigens through phagocytosis or inflammatory pathways. Thank you.